Hello and welcome to a FaceWare tutorial for Cheek Tracking in Analyzer. Separate Cheek Tracking, along with Jaw Tracking, is an advanced feature of Analyzer Pro available in versions 2.6 and above. As I said, it is an advanced feature, so if you're unfamiliar with the Analyzer Pro workflow, including creating training frames and training and tracking, then we highly recommend going back and familiarizing yourself with those first, as well as the basics of Retargeter workflow, particularly character setup. You can find tutorials on our support site at support.facewaretech.com for more information. We also have another video that covers jaw tracking, so you should watch that as well, as jaw and cheek tracking go hand in hand. So what's the point of adding cheek tracking in Analyzer? Analyzer already tracks the entire face, and each landmark actually represents a larger area around it, not just the dot you can see. Uh, so what's the point? The answer has to do with the levels of granular control when retargeting. See, normally when you're using standard face groups of just the eyes, mouth, and the brows, uh, these areas, the upper part of the cheeks and these lower areas down by the mouth, they're driven by one of those face groups. Uh, so if you're animating the upper cheeks, you may add those controls to the eyes group and character setup. You may add the lower ones to the mouth group. Now these can produce excellent results and have been doing so for years, but for added control, you can track the cheeks separately, as you can see here in this image and apply that to the cheeks on your rig for maximum accuracy in your final animation. Now, the same principles and techniques for making training frames in the other groups apply here. But as you can see, particularly if I move this cheeks area away, there aren't really many good identifiable places to place your landmarks in the middle of the cheeks. For this reason, we strongly recommend using markers on the face if you intend to use the cheek tracking feature. As ever with Analyzer, it's not at all necessary. As you can see by this shot, there's no markers, but it tracks perfectly fine. Uh, it just makes it quite a bit easier for the user to place their landmarks in the same place every time. Uh, I'll demonstrate first with this shot without markers, and then I'll show you one that was tracked with markers a little bit later just to demonstrate. And just to reiterate, markers are not necessary, but we strongly recommend them. First thing we need to do, as always, is create a new job. For the most part, it is exactly the same as any other time you're creating a new job, as you can see, standard new job dialog open here, uh, but with one exception. After you've dragged your video in and set up your names and frame ranges, etc., uh, you need to go to the advanced tab, which you can find here. So normally you're in general, go to advanced, there's not much here. Here you'll see the option for the analysis definition file. The default one contains the eyes, brows, and mouth groups, but we want the one with the jaw and cheeks as well. So we'll click here to browse to the appropriate place. It will be in your Analyzer installation folder, Program Files, Faceware, Analyzer, Assets. This location is the default Analyzer installation directory, and it'll be there. Um, and you see several options. This is the normal one you use. This is the one with the three groups plus the jaw. And this has all five groups, eyes, brows, mouth, jaw, and cheeks, which is the one we want. So we'll select it, hit open, and from here we hit create, and our new job will be created just as it normally would. To save time, here's a fresh job I've already created. You can see that the regular groups are here, you know, brows, eyes, mouth jaw. But the landmarks we're concerned with right now are these ones here. Uh, the cheeks. You can see them just in the cheeks group. Now it may not be perfectly intuitive uh, based on their appearance as to where the individual landmarks go, but that's what we're going to go over now. now you should note that the nose is here as it is in every group but you actually want to track the nose with the eyes as you normally would. You want to track the other groups first. Generally, they're easier. They're a little more straightforward. You probably already know how to do them if you're watching this tutorial. Uh, just for the moment, we're just going to take the nose and move it to its appropriate position just to get it out of the way and lock it so we don't have to care about it anymore. Uh, the feature you're going to want to pay most attention to on the face with regards to creating your cheek landmarks is the nasolabial fold, which I'll zoom in a little. It's hard to see. It's this vague crease 
you can see here. It's sometimes referred to as laugh lines or smile lines because of the way they become more apparent when the mouth stretches out wide uh, when smiling. And these are going to be key in guiding us into our landmark placement. Now, first we'll focus on these kind of middle points. They're typically the easiest to place, so we'll do those first. Uh, you want to follow the nasolabial fold up to the point where it intersects the side of the nose and place the landmark there. So on this side, follow it up, it's here. On this side, follow it up, and it's here. It's typically low down, roughly in line with the nostrils. So we're just going to move the whole thing, focusing on putting this place right. So that one is in the right spot. I like to move them all at the same time. It just it's easier to visualize what you're doing, in my opinion, but it's up to you. You can pull each landmark individually if you so choose. Uh, so that's where that's going to go. The lower two landmarks for each uh, group go along the, the fold itself. Uh, essentially, this bottom one sits on the fold pretty much lined up with the mouth. So if you draw a line, this is mostly a neutral frame. Ideally, you want a neutral frame or a neutral-ish pose to, to kind of put your first uh, training frame on just to, to orientate yourself properly. So we're going to move this one here you can kind of see it and follow it down right there. And with this one, you can follow it down and put it there. The one in the middle falls along the fold as well, about halfway up. If you can't see the fold because it's not as pronounced with some people, uh, you can kind of just draw with your mind an imaginary curved line from this landmark to this one, and roughly halfway, maybe a little bit higher, put that one. This last top landmark here, as you can see, rests uh, on the upper cheeks, which are about here and here on our particular actor. Uh, in a neutral f uh, face, it lines up roughly with the bridge of the nose, horizontally, so along this kind of imaginary axis and uh, vertically lines up more or less with uh, these bottom ones. That's why we place them in the order I just suggested. So there and there, our actor has some lines here we can kind of use to guide us, but not all of them will, so that's a general way to go about doing it. So here's the same job, uh, the same video was used to create this job. This is the one I shared at the very beginning of this video. Um, but it's entirely finished. All the training frames are done, everything is tracked, and it looks all pretty. Uh, you can see here, as I go to just the cheeks group, that there aren't very many cheeks training frames, maybe five or so in this job. Uh, in this case, our actor isn't making any weird or wild movements, as you can see as I scroll through each training frame. Uh, but even for shots like those, you won't tend to need many cheek training frames relative to some of the other groups. Uh, as ever, making a few good training frames is better than making a lot of poor and inconsistent ones, which I'm sure has been harped on if you've watched a bunch of these videos or read our tutorials, but it is incredibly important, so um, we're going to keep harping on it. Uh, the best way to ensure consistency, especially when you know there aren't good indicators as to, to where this landmark might go, you might be creating training frames, be like, okay, this is the first one, now that I create the second one, where am I supposed to visit? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? How do I see where it should go? Uh, the best way to ensure the consistency is to do what I've been doing to demonstrate this. When you're on a training frame, if you hold the control key and hit the left and right arrows, it will jump back and forth between training frames. Left to go to the previous one, right to go to the next one. And it's an excellent way to see exactly how each landmark is supposed to move. So I'll just demonstrate that real quick. Say, for example, I need to put a training frame in here. Yep. We'll say, okay, well, I'll move them first just to create a training frame. So I have something to go back and forth to. But then from there, I'll go back to that. And I can see exactly that, say I'm focusing on this training frame, this, this bottom right side of the face training frame. So I can see on the one I've already created, it's here, um, here. And you can tell where the movement's supposed to be. So I move that a little further down. And now I would do that for each one. And maybe look 
back and forth to see where the movement is. And that's the best way, the most effective way to create your cheeks training frames. Once you're satisfied with the training frames you have, I'm going to delete this one real quick. You just train and track your model as usual. You know, train and then track. And it does exactly the same as any of the other groups. Other than where you're putting the landmarks, it behaves exactly the same. So you OK, you track, it creates all your results, and voila. You've got tracked cheeks. It's not too hard, as you can see, but it just requires a little bit of extra care, um, maybe a little bit more so than the other groups. So now that you've seen how to do this without markers, we're going to show you real briefly how to do it with. And believe me, it makes it way easier. And you'll see why in just a moment. So here you can see a job where our actor has ink markers applied to his face. Let's zoom in a bit. So you can see. And as I move them to the side, you can see these are just simple ink markers placed in locations I described earlier as I was showing you uh, the proper landmark positions. Keep in mind that the trough tracking software thinks of this uh, exactly the same, but a user can create training frames much faster and much more accurately uh, when using the markers as a reference. As we move through the training frames, you can also see uh, more exaggerated expressions, with variety, a little more than our other actor had. Just to demonstrate, say, I want to make a training frame here. Remove these off so I have no idea where they originally were. Okay. So now, if, say I'm a user and I need to create a training frame. Instead of agonizing and going back and forth and how hard does it go, going back and forth between training frames, like I said earlier, I can just be like, well, I need to see these markers. So this goes here, this goes here. You just go here and here. Likewise, just place these very quickly and easily. That's why we recommend using the ink markers. Now, if you're shooting over multiple sessions, one thing to keep in mind is that we recommend taking a still image from the source as a reference so you can be certain about the placement of your markers from one recording session to the next. So now you should be all set to start tracking the cheeks along with the jaw get the absolute best results in your animations. As I mentioned before, you can find more tutorials, both written and in video form, at our support site at support.faceworktech.com. And general information about Facewear, our products, and how to sign up for a free 30-day trial on our homepage at faceworktech.com. Thank you for watching.